So uh, typically, uh, people join in. We start right at nine. We end right at ten. Uh, the first tweets are pretty much uh, take a second, introduce yourself, uh, where you're tweeting from, your role working for kids. So uh, why don't you guys just kind of introduce yourselves and what your role is in working for kids and and where you're from to anyone that's uh, watching. I think we've got nine viewers so far. Okay. I'm gonna let you guys start, and then I'll. Okay, my name is Carolyn Blocker, and uh, the way that I work for, for children is by helping their parents. And I am a parent education teacher, and so I work tirelessly to make sure that parents are parenting for, at two years old so that the correctional officer doesn't have to do it when they're 22. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Roberta? Yes. Where there we go. I? Hi, Roberta. I'm, hi. I'm Roberta Lanterman, and I've been working in the field of family literacy since 1992 um, with the Long Beach Unified School District. And I am so excited to be with you all tonight to share a little bit of what we do in Long Beach. And I'm so excited to learn more about what you all are doing as well. And I am Gwen Pescatori, um, home and school, which is like a PTO, uh, president for our elementary and, and our middle school, um, and uh, PT chat mod, and all kinds of fun things. Um, but I've met Carolyn and Roberta. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about that and, and how, uh, how this all came to happen. Um, I attended the National Center of Family for Families Learning conference um, in DC and they were one of the sessions and um, they won me over with this exact topic this um, steam to engage families and community and I was wowed um, I just think it's really neat um, way to to get families to join in and to include the community and not ask for money all the time um, so we'll build on it yeah, we do ask for money an awful lot, and uh, the two don't always go together in terms of engagement. Um, Not at all. Just coming for money. I mean, part of it, you know, some some families choose that's the only way they can possibly be involved because of one reason mm -hmm. or another, but uh, there are so many other ways. So uh, so this is great. We've got tons of folks uh, joining tonight. Uh, let see Kentucky here, Jim Detweiler. Okay. Uh, Jim, if you look on the Twitter stream right now, Jim's one of those uh, guys we had him on a couple of weeks ago with uh, his colleague Chad. Uh, they're, uh, they work at an elementary school uh, out in Kentucky, and they did that viral snow day video. Um, oh, okay. Remember that? I'm sure you've seen yeah. it. It's got like three gazillion likes at this point on YouTube. Um, but, you know, you'll find principals in the stream, teachers, parents, uh, administrators, uh, community members, board members. Uh, entrepreneurs, um, you know, all kinds of folks here, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of STEM perspectives tonight to bring uh, to the equation. All right. So you guys can hear and see okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Okay, great. And I see send... everyone sees us from home, which yeah. is a nice change from Let's Kansas City. <laughs> right? I'm going to send the link out one more time here before we get going on the questions. And again, Gwen's going to MC. Uh, she'll move us through the questions. She's got them all automated to tweet out from her account. Uh, our moderators will retweet them. We'll keep the conversation going. Kevin uh, Jarrett is our STEAM resource. He's on the Twitter stream. And then we'll be talking um, here live. Um, Joe, you'll, you'll, you'll chime in with questions that people yep. are asking? That, oh, yep. Okay. So that way... I don't watch the Twitter feed. <laughs> yep, I see Laura Gilchrist checking in from Kansas City there. We were with her a couple of weeks ago uh, at Excelsior Springs. All right, so here's the live link. All right. So we'll start. We shared out, there's, um, we shared out links uh, for your Facebook page uh, for the Long Beach Family Literacy. Um, it's actually your mom's club. And then we also shared Kevin's um, blog, which he does all kinds oh, of good. cool things. Um, uh, I, uh, I pass Kevin on Edutopia quite a bit, and he does he writes about all kinds of good stuff. Um. OK. 
Okay. There we go. You ready? Yeah. Um, so we're we get not start... going to try. I know. I know. Rocco's watching us. We're not going to try and be sad check because those guys are just seasoned pros. No, we're better. Uh, we're just, <laughs> just going to have have a conversation here. We're better. Um, an engaged theme. So it looks like it's nine oh six. We're coming up yeah. on the first question. Yeah. Um, when, are you sharing out the resources uh, in your stream as well, or just the questions? Um, I have anything that was on our moderator page. Okay. So All right, anything great. that was on there, it has gone out. So, like the links that just went out with the Facebook. Yep. And okay. Kevin's blog, um, and then we'll start, I guess, with you know, kind of why um, we should go about doing this, and yep. um, what is Steam. I guess that might be the first thing, maybe, that you can talk about. Um, is uh, yeah, because I think a lot of our out. parents have heard of STEM, but you know, you add the A. Right. Uh, so let's talk about what is STEAM. Well, Carolyn, Steam, do you want to start with that? Sure. STEAM is uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And there, the parents that are familiar with STEM probably are familiar because we have this sort of march toward science and technology. In, in our particular case, we wanted to support that, but what I had myself personally noticed is that as we move towards more science and technology, people are losing the ability to communicate face to face and to have a conversation with somebody. And as my own children, um, my oldest son is on the, the autism spectrum, I wanted him to be able to look people in the eye, to communicate with him, and I noticed through his participation in the arts that those skills were greater supported. So I didn't think that we could build a workforce for tomorrow without strengthening the personal and communication skills. And I, every time I help out with the show, um, many of the children that participate are somewhere on that spectrum and they get valuable feedback on communicating, speaking to people, making themselves understood just by virtue of their participation. So we can't really leave out the arts when we're um, trying to move towards the future. Very cool. Um, so we're going to start with the first question. Um, assessing the needs, what questions could you ask your families before you begin planning? Um, this was one of my favorite things that you guys did where um, was really get to like where they were at before you started um, planning the whole lessons and where you wanted to go and who to ask and everything. So um, we'll start with that first. Well, one of the things that, that we wanted to do was make sure that we weren't teaching something that they already knew about. And so we wanted to be sure that our parents knew what what, well, we wanted to make sure the parents um, of their parents' knowledge in each of the areas, the science, the technology, engineering, arts, and math. And so we gave them an assessment about those areas. And it was surprising because I think we all assume that people know about these things, but in reality, we found out that there was a lot of uh, work that we could do. So what kind of questions do you ask? I mean, like, where do you start on asking, you know, what they well, know without we, offending. <laughs> right. First, we just ask, uh, and and I don't, you know, when we did do these assessments, I was in the room, and the first person was, "What is? What do you know about science?" And you know, some people wrote, "Oh, I know that my children study it in school. I remember studying about volcanoes," and so that their answers vary. And the, the biggest thing, you know, we ask those small knowledge bits, but the big thing was, do you know where you can take your children to learn more about science? And hardly anybody knew. And they did not feel comfortable supporting their children in science. So in that case, we knew that we had to make sure, and, and our school district, probably like many others, has a school district science fair. And um, most parents are, as soon as they get the science fair project is due this day, they start pulling their hair out. <laughs> so we wanted to give them some knowledge that they could immediately use to support their children in our district science 
uh, requirements, as well as piquing their interest about science. And so that was um, one of the things that we had to find out, and not just about the science, but as the technology as well. And an interesting side note about the technology, a lot of parents were scared because there are movies like iRobot and things with technology going awry that we had, when our robotics expert came in, he really had to reassure them that this was a movie, that we were moving forward and not towards some age where the robots would be taking over the world. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it, it's, people's knowledge level is all over the map. So um, and that was that was one of the one of the the ways that we were able to assess their knowledge. Same thing with arts. I just assumed that everybody knew that they could take their child to participate in um, musicals around the city, but not the case. Um, when they saw the the musical, many of them had no idea that their own children could participate, and they got really excited. You know, mine likes to dance, or mine likes to sing. And I don't know how to support that. So the real big issue was maybe they heard the word science, maybe they heard the word, but they didn't know how up and coming and how important it was for their child's future as well as their own. Cool. Thanks to uh, Jerry Blumengarten. He just shared his STEM STEAM page. Of course, he's got a page for everything. Uh, <laughs> ladies, make sure you follow uh, Jerry. I uh, saw that you're now tweeting. I just put out your Twitter account. Um, he is at Cyberryman1, uh, and he's got a page for everything, uh, including Steam. So we're coming up on question mm -hmm. two. Uh, let's just yeah. highlight a couple responses from the first uh, question. Uh, Amber Carter uh, says, ask what their strengths are, then intentionally develop the Steam lessons around those strengths. Involve them, engage them. Uh, what else we got? We got a number of pictures. I love when people tweet pictures. Um, now that Twitter recognizes pictures and puts them right in the window, you don't have to open up another link. Uh, so embed them as much as you possibly can. Uh, but you know, a lot of responses gearing toward the the current needs, the current strengths uh, of our students, of our families when we're when we're in the planning phase. You ready? We'll go on to question two. Um, what questions do you ask yourself as a group before you're starting this project? Um, Carolyn? Yeah, when, when we started this project, we had to ask ourselves, did we know what STEAM was? And I think that was paramount to planning the lessons, is if we, we ourselves were a little bit shaky about what science really means as far as the future is concerned, or technology, then we couldn't help our parents to plan lessons and experiences. So we had to ask ourselves the same questions that we ask the parents. Do we know what science is? Do we know what technology is? Do we know what engineering and math and arts really encompass? And so it was, it was really a, a kind of an opportunity to do a little self exploration and see what what did we know and what did we need to know in order to make it successful as well as the embedded lessons that would be part of the, the project um, and later on um, we'll discuss those lessons like planning an experience for your child making sure you know the bus route and how you're going to get from point A to point B I think another thing, to, oh, I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. No, no, here. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I think one of the other things is because Long Beach, we do have a lot of resources in our community, and the biggest thing we wanted was for our families to feel comfortable with whoever we either brought into our um, our classroom or wherever we went to go visit. So we wanted to expose them to the highest level that we could, but yet have it be something that they weren't going to be turned off about, right, and not feel that they could bring this into their family or make it a part of, of their um, educational um, journey. So we really um, spent a good amount of time researching and also um, really getting to know the individual and, and how they were going to fit with um, our particular family. I can interject Scott Gaglione at... S. Gaglione, um, he says, 
it's a good idea to identify where their comfort level is and how we can kind of then support them. Uh, again, bring, we, we always bring up meet them where they are. Sometimes that's with technology, but in this case, not. Um, so really soliciting enough feedback to identify where they are. Hi, Scott. Scott, we had a good conversation with Scott on cold chat, um, which is another one of my favorite chats. Um, good stuff. Sorry. Side convo. <laughs> All right, where are we? Um, I think building the relationships, that's my biggest concern, is not offending families, like asking them where they're at without, without offending them, without making them feel like they, they don't know things or that they can't support their children or that they're, I don't want to say stupid, but that they feel right. like you're calling them stupid. Um, so I think having that relationship is huge. Well, and, and one of the things that helped us when our um, technology expert came in, he, he was working on a project called Getting Lily to Stanford, and he actually had research and documentation of what it took to get a four-year-old today into Stanford and how competitive it would be. So we, we have always given the parents that the idea is that we all are in this together as a community, as a village, to make sure that our children can be as successful as possible. So it's not to say, oh, you don't know enough to help your child. We all want to know enough. And I mean, I learned wonderful things that I still use to support my own children. So there's, there's learning for everyone. Joe, are there any questions or feedback? Now I'm looking through. How uh, well, do we? We're doing really well. I mean, it, there's an awful lot of people on. We've got about a tweet a second um, coming out over there. Um, Scott How nine we... at uh, ms uh, Scott nine says, "What promise are we making, and how can we keep it?" Uh, it's his input on the second response. How would you? How, how, how do you, what do you think when you hear that? You know, what promise are we making and how can we keep it in terms of how, our, how we're delivering this to families? My, my first impression when uh, that came up is that we promise that we will all work together to help our children and strengthen our community. Uh, I, I can't... And I Somebody think tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to tweet really right now. Somebody tweet that. Hurry up. <laughs> I don't think we can give individual promises, but I think a little bit more globally, we all know that if we're, if we're in it together and that if we rely on one another to help each other out, that it only makes things stronger. You know, that what is that? No man is an island. Yep. Yeah, it, it might be great to be by yourself sometimes, but it, it's really important to be able to function as a group. And even in the in the future, with people coming up with projects, working for companies and and laboratories and research clinics, they need to be able to work together. Bottom line. So we've got about a minute or so till question three pops up. Um, Ted Huff uh, out in Missouri. Um, he's talking about uh, his robotics club and how they're working to incorporate oh. STEAM. So I hope he continues to kind of share out exactly what that looks like, um, you know, the, the work that he's done in his school uh, to make that happen as we go on the chat. And if we get to that point, maybe we can even bring up a couple people on uh, to talk more about it. Has Kev what, what has Kevin shared? Because Kevin does some really neat things with um, Yeah, let's like talk technology. about... Um, Kevin's been busy retweeting uh, some great stuff from Alyssa and Scott uh, and Glenn Robbins. Um, uh, we, co we must cover mandated curriculum, but how can we successfully involve all teachers to push STEM forward? Mm. Uh, that was Glenn Robbins' mm. insight. That's a good question. Uh, we met Glenn uh, two years ago at parent camp. He came to NEP. Uh, One. That. Last year. One year? Was it last year? It was last Seems year. Like forever. We need to see him again. Hopefully comes Ed Camp Leadership. So. Okay, question three. <laughs> Here we ready? go. Oh, hold on. Um, 
uh, uh, here we go. Um, how do you convey the importance of supporting STEAM beyond the classroom? And then how does this directly impact um, a family and the community? Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of words. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll start with how do we how do we convey the importance of supporting STEAM beyond the classroom? Like, so what you know? Why is it important for families and the community to support you know beyond those four walls inside the school? Well, that's when we that's when we start bringing in our our experts to let parents know what types of jobs are out there and what types of skills are going to be necessary to be successful in that in that field and I think it's you know we have to bring it to their attention that now almost everything we do involves some kind of technology even now you with walking into a, a McDonald's and seeing a touch screen or a bank and seeing a touch screen you've got to be able to approach that fearlessly it not not just in your uh, work but also in your day-to-day -day life and so it's not just about, um, you know, oh, well, we're just taking a science class. It's, it's more than that. And um, my, my daughter is in the fifth grade, and they're taking their smarter balance testing. And they had to type their answers to the, the one standardized uh, test of reading the, the story and bubbling in the answer is gone. Now you have to have those computer skills in order to be successful on the tests. Right, and right. so it's really important that we empower the kids and the parents to help them. I think uh, sharing with them, like you said, with all of the careers, the different things that, mm -hmm. um, that the kids can do with these careers and that it's not just being a, a quote unquote scientist. Um, every single job, I think, probably pretty much um, incorporates some sort of piece of STEM or STEAM. And I think getting parents to recognize just on a Saturday afternoon when they see something, how, how the, it fits into that whole STEAM category. Is that technology? Is it science? And is it something that there might, their child might be interested in? Because the more exposure we give the parent, the more vocabulary that parent can have with their child and it, it just increases it in way increases the knowledge in ways that are immeasurable. Can you share since we're on this um, and now I'm drawing like the student that you brought to NCFL summit um, who went through your program and what it meant to her I mean I but what it meant to her family really like going through this program and how it changed um, I guess their their mm -hmm life in a way. Well, Julia um, Castro was, she came in in hopes of getting her high school diploma because it was something that she had made it um, to the, the age that she was. She had a career, she stopped working to raise her children, but she always felt like, oh my gosh, there's something missing. And so she came to our program with her daughter who was then one and a half and she started working to, to accomplish her goal of getting her high school diploma but along the way I remember when she came into my parenting class and she was so shy that if I called on her she would turn bright red and she didn't want to say anything and now here she is this wonderful leader because she sat in class and she listened every day and took the opportunity to be a leader, which is something that um, one of those embedded skills that um, happen as a result of and and of this project and many others, because what we did in our program is we allowed the parents to take leadership in planning the activities and in bringing it full circle. And how does this um, how does this generalize to science? And how did this change your family? And so they shared how they changed their family, how it changed their family dynamics. Um, on the post assessments after each experience, it was amazing how few blank spaces there were on the assessments. They had plenty to write about. And so from that, going from not being able to really say much about an experience to filling up the page, 
we know that we increased their knowledge and we know that we gave that family something to talk about. Hey, uh, Kevin Jarrett, uh, who's uh, our moderating over on the PT Chat Twitter side, he shared an article uh, that he posted uh, for Edutopia. It's called Strengthening, excuse me, blah, <laughs> Strengthening the Homeschool Part or Connection with a 3D Printer. Uh, so I know that they've got a MakerBot Replicator 2 3D Printer um, as part of that MakerBot Academy initiative. Um, and he tweeted it out. We, we retweeted it. But definitely take a look at that. Uh, take a look at some of the things that they're creating. Uh, he's got a whole page there with links to all those different kinds of things. Definitely check it out. Uh, follow Kevin at K Jarrett, J A R R E T T, uh, over on Twitter. You'll see a picture. I think that is him back in the day. I want to say that maybe he is. <laughs> uh, what is that? Maybe a second grade or a third grade picture? I don't know. Uh, I've always wanted to ask him, but I always forget. Uh, but great, great picture. Love his uh, profile picture. So we're coming up on uh, question, our next question here. Yeah. Um, so now it's um, more about getting started, and we've got our feedback now um, about what the families know um, and kind of a direction of where to go. Um, so the fourth question, who in your community? Hang on. Um, can let's, uh, let's just throw out the uh, PT Chat Radio links before we go to number four here. Mm. I was a little ahead of myself there. So... All our PT Chat radio segments, and we'll do a recap of this one with you guys, hopefully on Monday afternoon. I'll send you the link uh, later tonight uh, in terms of some times. But uh, they're all on the iTunes channel. Uh, I like to listen to podcasts in the car on my way to work, uh, from work. Uh, definitely easy. Uh, you just connect your smartphone. Um, either play it in your headphones or play it through your Bluetooth in your car. Uh, there's an awful lot of them. There's Sat Chat Radio, Ed Tech Chat Radio, Ed Chat Radio, Brand Ed Podcast with Tony and Joe, uh, Student Voice Radio. There's an awful lot of them. Find them over at the BAM Radio Network, uh, free listening. Uh, and uh, next week's topic uh, is to be determined. It's definitely going to be a scenario conversation uh, like we had a couple weeks ago in Kansas City. Uh, so if any of you listening, watching, tweeting, have some ideas, a uh, certain challenge that you're working through in your district or at your school, let us know. Maybe that will be next week's topic. So Gwen, go ahead. Take it away. Question number four. All right. You ready now? Um, ready to go. Uh, okay. So you've gathered feedback. Um, we have a goal set now. So now where do we start? Um, or I guess now, now we're going to set our goal. Um, who in your community can lend a hand, um, add value to your program? And then what are some resources? Like what kind of resources? Where do you start? Who do you look for? Um, who do you tap okay. into? Well, uh, you know, by coincidence, um, earlier today I had my um, group that I work with at my other school at our Long Beach Public Library and they do have a maker studio and um, they show the moms how to use a 3D printer and Very how cool. to use iPads right there oh. in our public library. Um, I, I spent all my time in college working as, at the college libraries. The libraries are your best place to start and th because they have the resources, they have funding that we don't know about that that can help increase a lot of those, um, I mean, support a lot of those um, and STEAM concepts. It was amazing to watch um, those moms when they saw that printer start um, making the things that they had created on the iPad and sent to the printer. It's, it's a really neat experience. And they were talking about how they couldn't wait to bring their children back because this for us was just it was the parenting class and I took them over and the librarian who's just wonderful with all these um, STEM and STEAM topics took them on a very specialized tour we went um, into another meeting room where he had set up the kitchen science experiments for them to be exposed to and um, when they made fruit batteries their faces just lit up, you know, like who, who knew that a battery, a banana had so much power? And yeah. so we've got to really get those parents on this party train because the kids won't get there unless the parents are supporting it. So <laughs> public library 
led us also to um, robotics and just looking around the community and seeing, okay, what is a big industry here? How can we get those professionals to come in and address our parents? I personally um, do not like to expose my parents to anybody that can't talk to them, that can't drop it down to a level where they can understand it. And so whomever you get to help you out that's from the community, make sure that they're parent friendly and um, because that that will turn parents off if it's somebody that's talking way above their heads. We were fortunate because everyone that we spoke to made sure that parents understood they were friendly, kind, answered questions, and I know our parents felt like they made new friends in these presenters. So um, check with the, check with your library first, and then if there's any universities nearby, colleges and universities, they're an excellent place to start because um, a lot of times they have interns in certain fields that are willing to come out and share their knowledge for no pay, and so um, that's always a good a, a good bonus for you and it also allows the, the parents accessibility to their community and what's available. We had many parents who didn't realize that Cal State Long Beach offered as many things as it did and here they were living less than 10 miles away from the university and um, you know a lot of them had never been on the campus, never walked their children around the campus and so for them to have that was another one of those kind of offshoot skills that we um, were able to share with them. I think one of the coolest things that you shared with me, um, you forget, was in talking about Drexel being a, a local university for us was um, their music program and that it's far more than just playing an instrument and the things that they can bring um, to a group, um, to a school. Um, can you expand on some of that, I guess? One of the things that we accomplished when um, when we took our, our students to see, our parents and our children to see um, the musical was that it wasn't just about being a performer. There were plenty of backstage jobs and uh, I was able to personally give them some insight because I usually am the person that mics everybody for the, the programs and so there to know that their skills, if they're creative, they might want to be a set designer or they might want to be one of the stage crew that's moving the sets back and forth. There were so many jobs that are available besides just putting on the song and dance. So letting them know that and like I said, I my friend's um, son is in the, in the music program and he is a drummer but he's doing so much more than drumming. Um, he's having to plan things, he's having to learn how to make connections with producers, and so it is a very inclusive program. And to have somebody come in and talk to parents and, and children about something like that, it, it can reach the shy kid that doesn't want to be out there in front of the, in front of the lights, but still wants to be part of the show. So uh, we're getting ready to hit up the question number five here. Um, I just have to. If you're just joining us, we've got Carolyn Blocker, Roberta Lanterman, and Gwen Pescatori uh, on the line. Uh, we've tweeted that link out. The National PTA also just tweeted it out. <laughs> and we've also got uh, Kevin Jarrett uh, on the Twitter sphere. Um, I, he's going nuts trying to get back to everybody over there, but he's doing a fantastic job. I uh, love what what um, Yeats, uh, Mark, it's my D Tech um, commented. He said, does the context of the programs match your local industries? I think that's important that we make sure that we are um, giving our kids you know, the experience or introducing them to stuff that is local to them. I mean, global too, but also what does the local community need um, going forward? That's good advice. Uh, we, yeah, Long Beach has a lot of resources, so we were able to, we had, a, we had a lot to choose from. I shared out, just so you guys know, I shared out a little picture collage of some of your um, lessons going on. Yeah, so, yeah. I love it. Um, and the learning. Great. Next question. 
We ready? Yeah, next question, but I just, I cannot, I think, I don't think we can retweet it enough. Joy Wright, you know, agrees with everyone saying, bringing parent-friendly speakers in, you know, just like you were just talking about, you know, our parents, they, are these speakers, you know, they, they not only have to be good with kids, but they've also got to be good with parents and um, a stern, this is the only way to think about this, or this is the only, you know, it doesn't work anymore. You know, we've got to really differentiate our effort, whether we're working with kids, with teachers, uh, or with parents. So, great point. So, go ahead, Gwen. Question five. All right, you ready? Question five. What are some examples of lesson topics that target each of the STEAM areas? So, we already covered the one. Like, there's your Shrek musical was arts, um, but you've got other ones. Um, and then we'll watch what people on Twitter um, chime in, because I think there's a million probably great ideas oh, yeah. out there. Uh, well, it, and for our science, I had mentioned before that we like to to support school district science requirements, but um, even more than that, letting parents know that their kitchen is probably the greatest laboratory in the world. And so when we did the kitchen science, everything that we use could be easily found in their kitchens. And, you know, it was kind of an aha moment. Oh, my goodness, wait a minute. If I put these things together, this will happen. And one of the funniest groups was making a rocket out of the two-liter bottle and rolled up paper and a little piece of PVC pipe. And so um, there's, there are all these, there are many lessons within each category, and you just have to decide which one will appeal to your, your parents or which one is necessary in the school district. And they're great rainy day exercises. That whole, like, using the fruit, like you guys did the kitchen science stuff. So using the fruit um, to conduct electricity mm -hmm. entertained two out of my three children for yes. a good two hours. Um, <laughs> I lost a lot of produce um, in my house because they had to test out every single item that they could. Um, but still, um, they, it's it, part it was, of it. It was, uh, it was a cool lesson, and it entertained them the whole rainy day that they couldn't go outside. And, you know, we also try and remind our parents that when their child, you know, makes another, makes a guess or says, oh, well, what if we try this, that they need to really take that on and, and write it down. I mean, obviously, if it's something safe, but, um, you know, write down <laughs> what they think well, and ask, well, what do you think might happen next? Or what would happen? So we've got to get them thinking scientifically. It's not just about, you know, going there and, and performing the rote steps, mm -hmm. but thinking like a scientist and, um, and getting in there and really um, having them experience it so that they can then talk about it and write about it, which is what they'll be asked to do. And then for, for my children, it became a whole, like, why? Like, why isn't the pepper conducting the electricity? Um, and so it became far more. It was a, it, oh, yeah. a, a Google exercise. Like <laughs> when we did when we did that activity today at the library, uh, we walked to the library, and um, the librarian said, "Okay, everybody, take a piece of fruit because I can't keep it, so it's your snack for the walk home." So it was kind of nice because we built a little nutrition into it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any uh, questions or comments? You know what? Uh, they right were now. talking. I think Kalila Harris. Uh, she's uh, in our program over at the University of Pennsylvania. She's joining us tonight. Great to have Kalila. Uh, and she talked about some items in the home that maybe we can use for musical instruments. Uh, what might be some of those instruments at home, and what would make them instruments? Well, of course, my favorite is lining up the eight glasses and putting different different levels of water in each one and, and going down and playing the scale on the eight glasses. And, you know, of course, there's the toilet paper tubes, the toilet paper rolls, and you can always put together a quick little guitar with some rubber bands and a piece of cardboard. So, you know, the list goes on and on. But as I have always told my parents, give your kids the items and challenge them to make an instrument because their imaginations are so fertile and so ready to, to create something that if you hand a child, oh, here, take this, see if you can make an instrument out of it, they'll probably be the one to come up with something. You're right. Well, I think, I, like, for me, I hated, I hate those child locks, like those safety locks. 
for oh, toddlers. Yeah. So for me, I moved anything that was unsafe for my children just to a point that they couldn't reach. And so anything in the cabinets or the drawers at their level um, became accessible for them. And right. um, let me tell you, wooden spoons and pots and pans and Tupperware containers and all those things, mm -hmm. they entertain for a long time. And boy, do they make a lot of noise, which yes, and to, their, it, it, to them, it's music. Um, <laughs> to me, yes. Those are the options. Question words. six is coming up, friends. Question six coming up. Uh, already? This is on, uh, yeah, already. It's already right. 942. Right. 642. I see the uh, the sun shining on the faces of yeah, the I know. California I keep friends. trying to no. dodge the sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you're just joining us, they're joining us from <laughs> lovely Long Beach, California. Yeah, sunny California. Um, so next question is, how do we put all of this into action and incorporate it um, or integrate it into um, one's curriculum? You guys have a little different setting, um, so I think it would be neat to have um, some feedback on um, the people that are joining Twitter is, how do you incorporate it into a mainstream school, you know, like a, an, an everyday public school system that is a little different than what you guys have um, right. set up, but if you guys want to start the conversation. Well, I think I, I think with anything, it, it kind of goes back to that beginning question of what kind of questions do you ask yourself? A lot of times, I think teachers don't buy in because they can't see the they themselves can't see the big picture, and so the presentation to the teacher has to has to support not only what they're doing in the classroom but what this will do for the child in the long in the long term you know so often when you're a second grade teacher or a third grade teacher and and I have been those things you think about your grade level but what we need to be doing with the steam concepts concepts is looking beyond second grade beyond third grade and into our future and so when we can get some when we can really make sure that they know what STEAM is, I think that it can be um, put into the curriculum gently and embedded into lessons. Now, I know that in my daughter's class, um, they do happen to have an engineering lab, and so there's a, a teacher's aide that has just a, a huge breadth of knowledge. And um, interestingly enough, they were learning about um, biomedical devices, and they had to make knee braces. So first they had to study the knee, and then they had to come up with what was happening, and during our spring break, they were away at camp, and one of their classmates actually fell and hurt her knee. When she came back, everybody crowded around her to see, let's see how we can make a brace to help Jane's knee. And so they <laughs> got instant feedback on this lesson that they had been exposed to two weeks earlier. And it is real life. And I, I am so happy that my daughter is at this school that makes science a real life and bio, biomedical and technology. But they had to understand that. And I think in every area, and her teacher is very big into performing arts as well. And she's been fortunate throughout her K through five career so far to have teachers that really can see the the value in communication by having presentations and not just so that mom and dad can come and clap, but for the betterment of the student. So you know we have to be a little creative as teachers. It's it's not just about opening a teacher's guide and finding it there. We have to understand our world so that we can work it in. You know what, every time I hear things come out of your mouth like that or, or other educators, I think, man, I wish that my own teachers growing up would have heard that from someone. Uh, it's just nice to hear more often than not. You know, it's not about the basil. It's not about the book. It's about making it come alive. It's about, um, you know, really responding to blurring the lines between home and school because we know our kids are into everything they possibly can be at home. Um, and let's do that in school as well. But I think it's also, if we even think about, who, at least for me, the people that I remember growing up in school are the ones that really, like, it was the history teacher who, like, we thought it was kind of ridiculous at the time, but he dressed up as whoever <laughs> we were studying in history. Um, 
uh, that's the only part of history lessons that I actually learned from, oh, yeah. <laughs> not the books that you know I had to read the text from. Um, yep. So I think that's important. Are we? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, that was my phone buzzing that the Phillies lost again, ten nothing to those Toronto Blue Jays. Apologies. Uh, Kevin Jarrett just shared out some uh, pictures of his uh, uh, paper laptops that he created in class, um, helping the kids understand and handle them with care before they actually got them. Uh, they created some paper laptops. Uh, practice safe handling of the real ones, keyboard, keyboarding awareness, creativity, uh, some screen images. He was uh, sharing that uh, with Bonnie McClelland, who's also on the chat right now. So we're guys, getting ready to go on to uh, question seven in just one minute. Do before you go before we go on, do you guys um, because I think you might have some experience. As John Fritzke had tweeted, um, would love to see research on how Steam Lab affects at-risk students. Do you have any kind of feedback on that type of stuff? Or no, no? I, I I don't have any research. Not um, research, but your personal thing. experience. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I can say that I'm, I can only speak to my personal experience with my own children. And, um, you know, as I said, my oldest is on the, the spectrum. But I will say that any opportunity to make this real world and to get him to participate has opened up a lot of doors for him. And... You know, he might, after the experience, kind of obsess about it a little while, but I'd rather him be obsessed about that than whatever the latest video game is. And so, you know, when he comes home really excited because his chemistry teacher did something or some other teacher did something, it, it was, it's never, he's excited because they said, open up and read page 42. <laughs> So I think that um, that's kind of a, a lesson not only to an at-risk student, but to any student that, like you said, your history came alive when your teacher dressed up. So it's sort of the, the war cry to all of us, you know, let's get out there and do our best every single day. All right, so i got to ask, whose dog is whining? Uh, because uh, uh, it wants some. That would be more. my child. That would be my child. Uh, <laughs> my. Uh, you got, we gotta see the dog. We gotta see the dog. Where's the dog? I'm not. No, Get no, the no. Dog on air. Come on now. <laughs> you know what she's doing? She she is she is laying at the bedroom door. She's ready to go to bed. Oh and, my goodness. Uh, Yes. Um, well, it's kind of late for her. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my bedtime is like 2 a.m., so she's going right, to so waste question to go. seven just go. posted, friends. <laughs> How are these STEAM lessons then funded? Uh, Laura Gilchrist just threw up there that she asked Kansas City Water Authority. Uh, I think that's what she meant. And they provided not only resources but a tour for students uh, of the plant. Mm. Uh, so very cool. Again, oftentimes all it takes is for us to ask uh, yes. to make a special visit uh, saying that, hey, we'd really like to know more about this um, in terms of your community engagement, your outreach. You know, can you make this happen for us? Mm -hmm. uh, now's a great time to be doing that. You know, you got the whole year to plan for next year. Start making these connections now and into the summer. Right, right. And, and you know what? If you get a passionate enough person, they are willing to share it and um, so far, nobody really has said, will you pay me for sharing this knowledge? Right. And, and I think that's a testament to the true professionals that we have gotten on our team. Um, our, our cost is in getting our parents from point A to point B. It's the transportation and it's you know tickets if we need something and those kinds of costs that it, it's hard to, um, to get people to donate for, oh, you know what, can you donate for a school bus? But it, it also gives us an opportunity to be creative in how we can do this. You know, as I said, um, before we went to Cal State Long Beach, we had the bus schedules, we talked about where it was, and it gave parents a chance to say, okay, wait, I can hop on the bus and do this. And, or I can pull out a map and carpool with my friend. So, you know, yes, funding is always an issue, but, you know, I always tell my kids, the answer is always no if you never ask. So I think it's just asking, asking, asking until somebody says, yeah, we'll help. 
what day do you need me? Right. I think going to people with a with a specific goal and um, to them not offering that generic blanket like I'm going to blast this out to 10,000 people and saying hopefully somebody will reply by going to someone specific and saying you have something that um, that you can offer um, that can benefit this particular goal that ties in with them that they can benefit from um, you go you know like from your community um, and asking them. And I lost my train of thought because, of course, I'm trying to tweet. <laughs> and uh, I, I just wanted to add that this Karen's being really humble right now because we started this project from the National Center for Family Literacy. Carolyn was um, nominated and won the Teacher of the Year for 2013. And so we did get um, a, some grant money to begin this project. Um, so we're very proud of that. And also from that, we looked at going to companies like Boeing and our Port of Long Beach. But then again, as we shared, we stepped back because we wanted it to be family friendly. So we went to smaller venues first with, again, having what you're all seeing and hearing this evening to then take to Boeing and the port and saying, look what we've done, and we want to do more, and this is what our families have learned so far, and guess what, with you know your donation now, we're going to take it to this level. So we, we, we first thought of going to Boeing and going to these bigger entities, but then we said, you know what, that's not, that's going to, that just doesn't fit for us now. So, so for, all, for us, for our STEAM Long Beach project, that's part two. Um, and, and getting the buy-in of the larger community now. This was kind of like us just getting our feet wet. I think this is one of the things, Roberta, that you had actually um, touched on at the summit that I had um, connected with was that you don't have to go for the big names and the celebrities, that there are a lot of people in your community that you don't even necessarily notice mm -hmm. at the time that can offer a lot and that you don't need the big names. and. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes. that also that you are um, being very humble in all of the work that you do, as Carolyn has said, you know, yes. <laughs> uh, going around and trying to, you know, drum up money to support, you know, your, uh, your group and the efforts that you guys do. So, both of you. Thank you. We're, we're really working with, the, um, with our school district right now to uh, really embed family literacy with our local control funding formula, so we're really excited. I'm working with several principals to bring this model um, throughout. Our district is very large. Um, we have over 80 schools, and um, we're, we're hoping to really um, step away from grant-funded programming to embed it into um, not just Title I, but other, um, other uh, pots of money, and hoping that we can share that model um, in the future. Okay. All right, final Any question, comments? friends. Here we go. Um, what are, uh, now that we've, you know, we've hosted the whole program is, what kind of questions do we ask to, to assess, you know, how successful or what we need to change or how we can improve? What kind of questions can we ask the, I, I think both, not only the families and the students, um, but also, you know, yourselves or, you know, whoever the leaders are that are running this. Well, As you're thinking about that, there's some really great uh, feedback coming in toward the end because remember we're on a little bit of a delay, you oh. know. So some people are responding to what you said uh, just a second ago that, you know, funding, you know, will always be an issue with a lot of different things. But there's so many different free opportunities. You know, lack of funding is not any kind of excuse to say, you know, we just can't do this. Uh, so definitely continue to put it out there, talking, networking. I know social media. There's an awful lot of our local um, and global uh, community offerings are now on Twitter. Uh, so there's, you know, using social media to reach out to some of these folks uh, is also another option. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had at NAP, and Joe, you, you were big on this, was Skyping in people, um, whether it was authors mm -hmm. or artists into our classrooms or um, people to our home and school meetings. Um, but I think our parents also have a lot to offer, um, too. So. Yeah, we don't know our parents well enough. We do not know what they do um, and how they can help the classroom enough. That's why we've got to have more nights, especially in the beginning of the year, 
uh, and days to you know find ways to get our families in the room. You know whether that's the virtual room, the physical room, um, doing some kind of uh, survey at the beginning of the year of parents. You know with our parents that are willing to share some of the work they do and how it might relate to the classroom, so we can get them on the docket and get them in. I think that's that. That's that whole relationship building piece yep. um, and actually caring about what these people have to offer um, and that yep. they're not just, they don't just have wallets and they're not just sending their children to school and not having anything to do. They're actually part of the family um, of the school. Um, and one of the things that we asked our families um, at the beginning of the year at NAP on our, um, when we send out the volunteer um, form of like what people would be interested in was if they speak another language and would they be willing to um, lend a hand um, with people um, that you know for our ESL families and I couldn't believe how many people um, were back that all of the languages that were spoken but then also that they were willing to lend a hand so um, mm -hmm. not quite the same type of thing but still there's a lot out there well you know it, um, about a month ago I did a career day at my daughter's school and I thought and she was really kind of nervous for me, like, Mom, you're a teacher. Who's going to want to come to that? <laughs> and um, I, I was a little worried, too, because I thought the same thing. I'm a teacher. You're at school. Who's going to want to come to that? But it is amazing. You know, the old-fashioned career day is a really good way to share knowledge, not only with the students, but also the other parents that are participating. Because, you know, a lot of people do things that I have no idea, and, I, you know, I'm taking notes thinking, hey, maybe this person would like to come and speak at, at our program. So like uh, you said, the networking opportunities amongst the parents, and it's all about, I guess, making that village, creating that village um, to help the kids and help our school. And um, you have to tell I met you guys. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> there's no You're other way positive that, I, that it works. See, there's no other way that I necessarily would have met um, a, a school um, educators um, from California and had a conversation with them about education um, if it wasn't for Twitter and all mm -hmm. of the other little things so yeah hey all before right, so. we run out of time I'd really like to make sure that you each are able to put out your contact information your website uh, so anybody watching because you know it's not just the folks watching live this is going to be archived and other folks will see it you know it's a really great resource for steam and engaging families so please uh, take a couple seconds and, and go ahead and, and share that for us. Uh, well, you can uh, email me at um, C, F is in Frank, blocker, B L O C K E R, at lbschools.net. And um, we also have a um, Facebook page, Long Beach Family Literacy Moms Club. And you are now on Twitter. And, yes. Oh, and I'm sorry. We're on Twitter. <laughs> LB Family Literacy. Uh, I, I think you're, here. you're actually at FamLit LB. At FamLit is your is your is your handle. But yep. um, yes. yes. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Roberta, did you want to share yours? Oh, sure. I'm at um, R Lanterman at schools.net and, and then, at the same we share it we share the um, family um, LB Twitter and I am Gwen Pescatori uh, G as in Gwen um, Pescatori P-E-S-C-A-T-O-R-E 25 and thank you ladies you are simply wonderful and so is everyone else on Twitter and now I get to go back and read the Twitter feed and yeah, retweet yeah, and share and all of the good furious. stuff. Lots of great stuff. Fast and Furious. Uh, this uh, video will be archived over on the IEL.org slash PT chat. Uh, we're all of the archives of the Twitter conversations for the last almost four years now. Uh, as well as this video will be there as well. Thank you to Gwen Pescatori uh, for all of her uh, planning and preparation and for going to see you guys live so she can come back all jacked up to uh, bring you back on here on PT Chat. So My next uh, trip again. is Long Beach. I'm going right. to Yay. Long Beach. <laughs> and thank you for inviting us to uh, part, be part of the chat, and um, we'll look forward to talking to you again. Absolutely. Good night.
Take care. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Thank you. All right, we're we're uh